Okay, the next uh, collection that we'll work with is the set collection. Uh, looks very similar to the others, uh, but has uh, a lot of restrictions. Right, so let's jump right in and take a look. It should go quickly this time. <laughs> All right, as usual, I have created, let me get my microphone on here. Sorry, guys. The last one, I almost forgot it. That should be a lot better. <clears throat> so as usual, I have created a function. I just modified the name of the other one. Um, and I've listed at the top this some of the characteristics of the python set All right so we've done lists we've done tuples and now we're doing sets so we are not in a set we're not allowed this is important we're not allowed to have a double so what will happen here is that that's going to have an impact here because of this because i've had a double here uh, uh, a duplicate right there's a duplicate element in here. So let's see what's going to happen with that. Uh, the elements are unordered. Okay, this is important as well to know with sets. <laughs> and that is to say that I cannot guarantee that seven will be my first element when I look into this collection. Or, or print it even like we might even notice when we print the the set here on line seven we might notice that it's it, it's going to print out in an order different than this order that i have uh, uh written it in initially right so we'll see what happens there it may or it may not right the thing is uh we, we can't trust that it will there's no guarantee that it will be in the right order right so at any any time we run this program it could change the order Right? And I hope it will right here when we run it, but we'll see. All right, so the individual elements, the next thing, uh, the individual elements are not indexed. So we cannot use the square bracket indexing to try and access these members, these elements, uh, and they are immutable on top of that. Right? So even if, even if we could, we, so we, we not only I mean with with the tuple we couldn't mute we, we couldn't change the values right but we could at least read them individually right using indexing here in the set we can't even read them that way so it's even more restrictive right and we're not allowed to have duplicates okay so um, that is what it is uh, uh, it's a very restrictive collection. And uh, once again, as has been the case with the uh, list and with the tuple, it's not my use of the word set here that makes this a set. It's the use of the curly bracket and a list of comma separated elements. Right? So in all cases, it's always a list of comma, a series of comma separated elements. And then what those elements are wrapped up in determines the type of collection that this is and in this case with a curly bracket on it it is um, a set all right so i'm going to try to print this set out first thing the same three initial uh things that let's clear this the same three and let me get let me grab this call here so my call is just this portion right to the function, my call of the function. Let's paste it right there. All right, so we're gonna print, we're gonna see what this looks like in the print. Now right here, we're gonna see, are they gonna be in order? I don't know, we're gonna have to see. The thing is, we don't know what order they're gonna be in. We could run it twice and, and they could be in different orders. So we don't know what's gonna happen there. I know it's gonna print something, but, but what? All right, and then um, that's the type, sorry. It's gonna, for type, it's gonna read probably let's try to guess before we do it it's going to read class and uh, the class will be set in quotes right in tick marks and then it's going to print the set <coughs> and we're going to see it'll have curly brackets around the set but we don't know if the seven uh, the sys 101 sys 103 are all going to be in that same order 
So we'll see. And then we're going to print the length. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it and then talk about what happens. Oh, geez. Are you kidding me? I did that again. I'm not going to explain what that was again because I just explained it in the last video and I think it's clear. It probably happened to you guys already. All right, so here, class set, which we expected for the type. Um, here's the list of elements, and the list was written the same way that I wrote it up there with curly brackets around it, right? And we see that it's out of order, right? Sys 108 is the first element, seven is the second. One, uh, and, and furthermore, let's look at something else here that's very important. Notice that in the original, when I originally initialized this variable, I had a duplicate. I had sys108 string twice in the, in the set. And when we print the set now, there is only one sys108. Okay? That's because duplicates are not allowed. And so it does not throw an error. It just, it doesn't create duplicates in the set when, when it's created. Right? So it's just, it's just not there. Duplicates are effectively ignored. Okay, and then the number of elements, interesting, right? It's kind of consistent with, with the fact that the duplicate got dropped. There's only five elements. It did not count the duplicate element. So that's, that's a major difference right there between um, sets and the other two collections that we looked at, lists and tuples. Uh, this might seem excessively <laughs> restrictive. And, and what these sets are used for quite often is um, mathematical set operations. So if you think back on unions and intersections and whatnot, unions wouldn't have, if I was going to union two sets together mathematically, right, in a math class, if you think back to your math class, uh, I, uh, the union would not have duplicate entries in it. Right? Even though the element may have existed in set A and the element existed, some element, the same element existed in set B, the union would only have one copy of that element, and not, in, not in both. So it's consistent with its mathematical use, and, and that's primarily what these are used for. So I don't want to go too long on them, but I would like to, uh, I just want to present them to you because they exist. Right in, in this language, and there are one of the. We're going to get rid of these again, as usual. Well, let's look at what's going to happen here now. So, in my next set, before we even go there, let's look what I wrote here at the top. I wrote that they're not indexed, right? And you can't change them, right? You can't modify them. So. Here I am about to try to use an index to access, and I'm not even trying to change it, right? I'm just trying to access it. I'm trying to retrieve it to print it, but not modify. So they're, but they're not indexed. So this is going to be a problem right here. This is going to be a problem. I'm just going to go right there and you'll see that we're going to have an error is going to get thrown right here, right? Sets are not, oh, that's my, that's my, it's me. Type error, set object is not subscriptable. Okay, so it's the same thing as indexing. I'm just using a different word. And so if that one's gonna fail because of the, because of the index, the use of the, the subscript, they're calling it, uh, so then this one will fail as well, right? Because it's trying to do the same thing. Of course, it's, it's the same line, just a different index the same execution. So those are going to both fail. Um, can I print the type of, of an individual element of the set? I'm not going to be able to do that. Right? Because once again, I'm, I'm trying to index, I'm trying to use an index in a set and it's not allowed. So it's not, none of those are going to work. Let's ditch it all this. I, mean, I could prove it to you, but I'm, I'm, I think you get the point. It's not going to do it, right? And so we're going to have the same problem here, right? For two reasons. <laughs> it's not indexed, and even if it were, it's immutable. So if, if I'm doubly wrong on this line, right? It's not going to be possible. 
I'm not going to be able to so I'm not going to be able to modify it or print the modification or see the type of the of the thing that was modified I can though return my set <laughs> uh, so if I were a, if I were a, a, another function and something was going to happen in this function um, this function could return something to me right in this case I'm returning the set but it's going to be the same set that got sent to me, right? Because I can't, I can't mute it, I, um, or I can't modify it. I can't change anything in this set, right? So I typically would be trying to union maybe maybe two different sets were sent to me if I'm I'm speaking as if I'm this function, uh, and I union those two sets together to create another set, a third set. And then I send that third set back. I return it. That's the only kinds of operations I'd be able to do inside of this function, right? And so the importance of this video, I suppose, is to just show uh, that you're you're aware of those restrictions, right? And so again, it's uh, it's really used in mathematics when you're when we're doing uh, computations in the computer. So you may come across it depending on what your major is. You may need to use it. Uh, but for, for general purpose, uh, we probably, I, I hate to even say it like that, we probably wouldn't use it, right? We'd probably use a list or a tuple. Uh, but it exists, so something to be aware of. So this was a short one. I finally got a short one. <laughs> we'll do dictionaries next.